Well, joining me now to discuss today's latest developments is Junior Mutabazi, a Great Lakes region analyst. Junior, thanks for, for joining me. Um, th there's a lot of confusion here. The president's social media networks, first of all, said there was no coup at all. Then they said there had been an, an attempted coup, but it had all been sorted out. But from the scenes we're seeing on the streets, um, th there quite clearly has been something. W what do you know? W what's the truth behind it? Uh, I mean, according to the reports that we've been following all day since this morning, uh, the uh, the news is that there has been a coup. Uh, obviously, uh, from the president's uh, point of view, they will have to undermine, try to undermine any developments that have come uh, across. Uh, but as far as uh, as far as the uh, uh, media goes, as far as uh, what's coming out of Burundi from from different different uh, viewpoints, uh, there has been a coup, uh, at least an attempted coup. And uh, at this moment, that's 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 the you know. Now, President Nkurunziza uh, was at a summit in Tanzania. He's now left that summit. We, we know that he's on his way back to Burundi. Correct. But we also know that General Nimbari has called for troops to protect the airport, to, to basically stop him from landing. Yes. They've turned off all the, the, the lights at the airport. Um, and the latest report we've got is that he's probably heading to Uganda. Um, will, he, will he be able to land in Burundi? Will he be able to carry on as leader? Uh, I mean, first of all, it's important to, uh, to, uh, to note that the uh, East Africa African presidents, the leaders of Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, and uh, and uh, Kenya, have condemned the uh, uh, the attempted coup. So, um, as as coup goes, uh, when a pre if a president is outside of the country, it's very likely that they will try to close off any avenues that might help him come to to the country. So they will close off the uh, the airport. They will close off any borders. And uh, as uh, uh, the last time I checked, uh, the rep reports were indicating that he he he's heading to Uganda because that's possibly the likely place that he will be able to, I don't know, probably communicate to his own people. But currently, he cannot do so in Burundi. Um Police have shot at soldiers and at the crowd, and, and the information we have at the moment is that two of the protesters has, have been killed. Um, this could, of course, been a, a, a lot worse, couldn't it? O overall, has it been a fairly peaceful coup, do we think, if, if it is, in fact, a coup? You, you can argue that it has been quite a very uh, uh, quiet day in terms of uh, uh, attaining peace, uh, two, people, two people being shot at. Uh, but what we have to remember is that... Uh, Unlike the police, uh, the, the army in Burundi have been seen to be neutral because uh, when you go back to the uh, Arusha peace agreement, uh, it was, the army was to be composed of all sides, so all factions that were fighting for, for over the 12, decades, uh, 12 years. Uh, so it, it, the army has been seen to be quite neutral, which means that it's more likely to be believed whatever, they, whatever direction they, they sort of want to take, it, they will be quite believed, which in a way can bring some kind of peace. Uh, the army will try to neutralize any kind of violence, whether it comes from people or the, or the police as well. Um, what actually is there beef against Nkuru Ziza? I mean, his administration says, and I know this is coming from them, Correct. that they've brought peace to Burundi. And he certainly does appear to have brought a certain amount of stability, Correct. particularly after the civil war. So, so why are they so against him? Uh, primarily, the first thing uh, uh, that Burundians argue is that he is overstepping in seeking the third term. According to their constitution, he's only allowed to serve two terms. But the constitutional court has said that this is legitimate, that he can go for a third term, haven't they? It is possible. It is possible that the, the constitution has said so, but we don't know how independent that constitutional court is. I mean, if it is the president who appoints those, uh, those judges, uh, we, we've had, we, have, we have had uh, reports of uh, one of the judges who fled to Rwanda. Uh, because he did not agree. He thought there was a lot of pressure for them to agree with what the president was suggesting. So you cannot, uh, it's difficult to argue that the court was independent. But apart from uh, uh, the problem of seeking the third term, it's important to, uh, to note that a lot of Burundians have been quite unhappy with the progress they've made in terms of coming out of poverty. So they've seen the last 10 years that he served as if they, they can't see any promise of a better Burundi five years ahead. So on top of him trying to fabricate and change the constitution, according to them, they, they just see it as a, as a time for him to leave so that someone else steps 
forward and perhaps tries to do something different. What's been the international response to this? I, mean, I know it's very early days, but the East African community has condemned the coup already. Correct. What other response are we expecting? Are we looking at sanctions? Uh, you could... You the coups are quite diff difficult, especially the one in Burundi, because uh, for the last the last few uh, few weeks, uh, the leaders across the world have been condemning. I've, I've tried to condemn what's going on, how he's trying to change the constitution. They say that that's unlawful, but at the same time, they are they they are caught in between because you condemn what the president has been doing, and at the same time, you will have to condemn what the military is doing. So finding common ground. Will, will be quite difficult. The first thing, I think, is to neutralize any kind of violence that is there or is likely to happen. And after that, then you can find common ground. So for me, I see it as a way where it will be back to square, square one, where they will try to, to, to negotiate just the same way they did in Arusha uh, over 12 years ago. OK, Junior Mutabazi, uh, Great Lakes Region Analyst, thank you very much indeed for joining. You're welcome. Thank you.